Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, a Chibuya main character, a love interest with a unique style, edgelordy statements, manga news, and debates. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga View. I'm your host, Zan, Zan Konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, no way, what's up? Hope you're doing well out there in internet land. Hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode of this awesome podcast that you can find at that awesome and amazing www.spyarkin.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and various other social media sites. Just remember to like, share, subscribe, and if you're watching on YouTube, hit the bell for notification to hear more episodes for us to enjoy. And with that in mind, let's actually get to it because I'm excited to talk about this awesome podcast in the manga that we reviewed in this episode. But beforehand, if you want to check out my review of Anime Boston 2023, it is up on YouTube right now. Just go to youtube.com forward slash Spirekin and our website www.spirekin.com where you can watch both. And with that in mind, let's actually get to the manga review of the week. Because if you remember from that last episode, I spun that one that only, the Wheel of Manga. Nick Dick Tanner to be there reviewing a manga. Well... That was written by Norio Sukurai and published by Akita Shoten and Seven Seas Entertainment. Uh, the original run was 2018 to present, meaning it's still coming out. It was released in Weekly Shonen Champion for the first month of 2018, then it moved over to Weekly Champion Cross, and now it's currently in Manga Cross Magazine, so it has bounced all over the place, but it is still popular. There are eight volumes currently, and it is a Shonen rom com slice of life series. That's original title was Boku no Kokoro no Yabai Yatsu, or as we know in the United States, it is simply known as The Dangers in My Heart. And this is a very unique story, one which is kind of beautiful, kind of dark, and kind of cringy at the same time. It's the story of a young man whose name is Kyotaro Ichikawa, and Kyotaro is a Chumbuya. He's someone who's kind of edgelordy, suffers from middle school syndrome, and his thing is that he's really cringy because he's obsessed with murder and killing people, and he thinks that he wants to kill all of his popular classmates. He reads murder encyclopedias, and he loves learning about human anatomy. But the girl he's most obsessed with killing is Anna Yamada, the classroom idol, who is an actress... She's in magazines, and she's really cute, and he just has an obsession with her, and he wants to kill her. He doesn't know why, but he's kind of dumb about it, and he's like, you know what, it's weird. So, one day when he decides, I'm going to go to my haunt, which is the library, he discovers her in there eating snacks. And he's like, okay, this is weird, she's here eating snacks, I'm just going to ignore her, because I want to kill her. And maybe today's the day I can kill her, but I'm not going to, because I don't know what I'm doing. And as he observes her, he sees she's kind of weird. She's this really pretty girl, but she eats chips like a crazy person. She buys a party-sized bag for herself. She buys tons of breads, tons of candies, and she eats them. And he's like, what the hell is this? She's supposed to be this really cute, pretty girl. And this he's seeing a side of her that no one else sees. And he also observes her doing things like half-assing a uh, assignment for their class. Like, literally just not measuring it out, just drawing a chart for her class group and you know she spills chocolate oh crap i spilled chocolate on the on the paper instead of wiping it off or getting a new piece she ends up incorporating the chocolate into the kanji to make it look like it's like the one of the slashes on it and she runs out of room and she makes it look really bad she and she messes it up pretty bad at one point she has to cut the piece of a uh, poster board in half and she's ripping it and he's like i have a knife in my hand i could stab her but i could give it to her but she'll think it's weird that i have a knife and turns out she takes it and she's perfectly fine with it and she just uses it takes it and leaves he's like what what the hell why are you doing that and he doesn't understand what's going on he's kind of confused by why she did that also at one point her classmate yells at her saying hey were you eating in the classroom? She's like, no, he was. And hands him the bag of chips. And he's like, wait, one second. And eats all the bags. She's a glutton and she's weird. And he sees the points about her. Her that's so unusual. He's kind of confused. And as you can guess, there is something up about her that he kind of likes, kind of doesn't like. Like at one point he notices that they don't use the, the poster board chart that she worked so hard on. And he's like, wait a minute. What? She worked so hard on it. Why are they not using it? It, she really she's upset about it and he understands 
As you can guess, his whole I'm going to want to kill my classmates is just him being cringe lordy. And the truth is he actually likes Anna a lot. He is seeing the quirky side of her and he does things like when he sees that she's going to cry and someone's going to watch her, he ends up sabotaging his own class project to make it so that people don't get upset at her or cry. You know, like they don't see her cry. He sabotages his own thing just for that reason, but he's there for her and it's kind of cool, kind of. You know, it's this weird friendship they have where it's this hidden relationship that they're like, they hang out in the library and they do different things. At one point, he sees that his friend is going to talk to a girl because he's going to ask her out. He's like, I'm going to just make myself scarce. Anna's just sitting there just completely ignoring it and he's kind of hiding. He bumps into the wall and Anna's like, there must be must be a cat back there. And so uh, you see him make a cat noise like a meow. And then she goes back there and says, let me look at it. And she makes a meow noise. They pretend like their cat's fighting. And it's just a really endearing scene of them covering for the fact that this friend is trying to hit on this girl. And them making it, well, it's weird. It's different. It's fun. And as you can guess, it's them developing their relationship and kind of it's she likes him immediately and he just doesn't understand what is going on and the first half is him being really creepy like i don't know what's wrong and then he realizes he likes her he doesn't know what to do at one point he's like i should just kill her and be done with it but he really cares about her and it's just them developing their relationship as it goes on and as the vibes go on it gets more endearing more unique him meeting her family her meeting his very strange family and them kind of getting together and i have to say when it gets to a certain point, it is kind of beautiful in a, a really good way. Especially, it's a very unique... Well, when he finally tells her how he feels, it's a great moment. And it's very different than what you expect in most traditional manga and anime. Now, for the art style, it's good. It's a really good art style. It's not a great art style. It's decent. It's You have the CG moments, but all the characters look very unique and everyone does flow well like her dad looks like a complete monster meanwhile all of Kyotaro's family looks very similar in a very good way the classmates on the other hand they really don't shine they do have unique designs but for the most part they don't incorporate these unique characters just this is classmate a b c d e f there's a friend who's kind of weird but there is no real connection with them and for that purpose it's just I don't want to say it's it's bad, but it's just it doesn't enthrall me as much. The, our main story is Anna and Kyotaro, and those scenes are the scenes which make this manga. And that's one of the best parts about this is that it does focus on Anna and Kyotaro's relationship, and I've got to say, that is the best part about it. The other elements are just kind of, well, I don't know. They're... I'm kind of stumped on this because on the one hand I want to give this a really great rating because it is a good story and I like the fact that you have Kyotaro growing up and realizing he's in love with this girl and fixing himself even though they're both middle schoolers on the other hand you do have this just kind of cringy Chunibyo element which is kind of annoying and they drop after a certain point which is good but by the time they drop it, it's been several volumes, so you have to stand in for the long haul. And that's where you're kind of at a conundrum, because the art style is good, main characters are amazing, side characters suck. So you don't know really what to do at that point. So for those reasons, it's kind of middle of the ground, and for that reason I have to give this our middle rating, which is a gift from your crazy Aunt Muriel, or a gift from your crazy Aunt Muriel. It's okay, but in the end, it's just kind of forgettable. It's really just kind of, it's got some unique elements, and I love the relationship between them, but there's nothing that stands out about them. Besides him being cringy and him growing up, there's nothing else about him. Anna is a weirdo, and I like that she has these weird elements. Like, at one point, they're at a convenience store, and her magazine just came out and she's waiting for someone to pick up her magazine and she kind of moves it in order. And she, Anna's the interesting party. He's kind of boring. And not like for, for example, in Comey, our protagonist, 
He is super normal, but that normality makes him interesting. In other harem series, yeah, there's a typical, oh, he's the smartest person in the room, he's an asshole, he's saving money, he's this. There is an element that's just intriguing. Kotaro's is just, I'm a Chunibyo who's weird and wants to kill a girl and I like the girl and I don't know what I'm doing. You can root for him or you can't. That's the thing. I'm kind of past the point of these characters who you don't really want to root for. So, for that reason, I have to give this a give from a crazy aunt mural. It's okay, but in the end, it's kind of forgettable. Now, if you disagree with me or you agree with me, you can email me personally at Zan, that's X A N at Spirekin.com, or you can tweet me at Spirekin and let me know your thoughts. Did you enjoy this? Did you not enjoy this? Do you think it was insane? What were your thoughts? Let me know if you really did agree with me or if you thought that I'm being too harsh on Kyotaro and Anna's relationship or if you think I'm being too nice about this manga The Dangers of the Heart let me know email me at zanspirekin.com let me know your thoughts and so with that in mind let's actually get to the next part which is the manga releases for the week and there are a lot this week this was hit really heavily so let's actually get to it shall we so these are the mangas that were released for April 18th 2023 yes and let's get to it because we have tons of it shall we so first off we've got uh, Returners Magic Should Be Special Volume 2 A Story of Seven Lives the Complete Manga Edition Akashi Records of Bastard Magic Instruction Volume 16 Aphoretta from Commonplace to World Strongest Zero the Manga Volume 8 Barbaritas 2 Blue Lock, Volume 6. Catch Those Hands, Volume 4. Cheeky Brat, Volume 6. Combatants Will Be Dispatched, Volume 8. Cross-Dressing Villainous, Cecile Sylvie, Volume 4. This is the light novel, not the manga. Dead Dead Demons, Destruction, Volume 12. Does it count if you lose your virginity to an android, volume 1? Doomsday with my dog, volume 2. From the Red Fog, volume 4. Go, go, loser ranger, volume 4. I got a cheese skill in another world and become unrivaled in the real world, 2, volume 3. I'm a behemoth, an S-ranked monster, but mistaken for a cat. I live as an elf girl's pet, volume 6, the manga. I'm Quitting Heroing, Volume 2. I'm the Villainous, so I'm Taming the Final Boss, Volume 5. This is the light novel. In Another World with My Smartphone, Volume 8, the manga. In the Land of Letterly, Volume 8, light novel. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Familia Chronicle, Episode Freya, Volume 1, the manga. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon on the side? Sword Oratory, Volume 19. Kimono Jihen, Volume 5. King's Proposal, Volume 2. Kaon Shuffle, Volume 1. Kanasuba, God's Blessing in This Wonderful World, Volume 15. Kowloon, Generic Romance, Volume 3. Laid Back Camp, Volume 13. Let This Grieving Soul Retire, Volume 5. Love in Heart, Volume 7. Love's in Sight, Volume 1. Made in Abyss, Volume 11. Moroko Chan, Volume 7. Yes, this has finally come out. And if you've been following Moroko Chan, you know how awesome this manga is. Anyway, let's go on. Mission Yozakuro Family, Volume 4. My Gently Raised Beast, Volume 2. My Lovey Dovey Wife is a Stone Cold Killer, Volume 4. At My Youth Romantic Comedy is Wrong as I Expected at Comic, Volume 19. This is the manga, not the light novel. Our Last Crusade of the Rise of a New World, Volume 6. This is the manga. Reborn as a vending machine, I Now Wander the Dungeon, Volume 1 of the manga, has finally been released. Yes, Boxo has finally been introduced to the world, and it's going to be amazing and great to see him destroy the world. But And the anime supposedly is coming out this year. I'm actually excited about that. Anyway. 
Next. We have Record of Ragnarok, Volume 6. Remnants of Filth, Yu Yu. This is the Mahua novel. Uh, this is Volume 1. Rent a Girlfriend, Volume 18. Run on Your New Legs, Volume 4. Sasaki and Miyano, First Year, Volume 1. Saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement, Number 1. This is the light novel. Slasher Maidens, Volume 7. Something's Wrong With Us, Volume 14. Spy Classroom, Short Story Collection, Volume 1. This is a light novel series. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, Volume 1 of the manga, and Volume 3 of the light novel. Sudome Milky Way, Volume 7. Suppose a kid from the last Dungeon Boonies moves to the starter town, Volume 12. This is the light novel. Survival in Another World with My Mistress, the light novel, Volume 5. Tales of the Kingdom, Volume 3. Tatsuki Fujimoto, Before Chainsaw Man, 22 to 26. Teasing Master Takagi-san, Volume 17. The Boxer, Volume 2. The Demon Swordmaster of Excalibur Academy, Volume 2 of the manga, and Volume 8 of the light novel. The Hero Laughs While Walking the Path of Vengeance, a second time, Volume 5, light novel. The Husky and His White Cat Shizu, Erohe Ta Ke Da Bai Mao Shizun. This is another Manghua novel, Volume 3. The Ice Blade Sorceress Shall Rule the World, Volume 5. The Magical Revolution of the Reincarnated Princess and the Genius Young Lady, Volume 4. This is a novel. The Princess of Convenient Plot Device, Volume 2, light novel. The Saga of Tanya the Evil, Volume 19 of the manga, is being released. The Vexations of a Shut-In Vampire Princess, Volume 4 of the light novel. The Witch and the Night Will Survive, Volume 1. The World After the Fall, Volume 2. Tokyo Revengers Omnibus, Volumes 9 and 10, being released. Trinity 7, Volume 21. Baki Cho Lonely Planet Volume 3 Ultraman Volume 18 Undead Unluck Volume 11 WITCH The Graphic Novel Part X Ladies vs. WITCH Volume 1 The Manga What's Wrong with Secretary Kim Volume 1 Why Relania Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion, Volume 3, and then last and certainly not least for 48 mangas that were released this week, Words Bubble Up Like Soda Pop, the light novel adaptation of the anime. And you can watch this currently on Netflix. And so that is our list for the week of all the new releases. Which is the one that excited you the most? I've had a couple that were really exciting and some that were kind of cringy to me, but the ones that excited me the most, the five that were my top five this week, are Kowloon Generic Romance, Volume 3, Moroku Chan Volume 7, Reborn as a Vending Machine, I Now Wander the Dungeon Volume 1, Run on Your New Legs Volume 4, and then last and certainly not least, Ultraman Volume 18. Which of the ones you most excited about? Uh, let me know. Email me at zansparkin.com or tweet me at Sparkin with your thoughts on what your favorite one was. Was it one that you really enjoyed or one that you thought was kind of mediocre? Let me know. And with that in mind, let's just get to some last minute updates, shall we? So first off, a couple of things. Uh, besides the manga, the manga review release for the anime convention, Anime Boston, we're going to be going to a couple other conventions, including Animazement 2023. I'm excited for that. It's going to be my first convention in North Carolina. Yes, I've officially revealed. I have moved to North Carolina. Hooray. I'm now a North Carolinan. Go Panthers. Or actually, more importantly than that, go Charlotte Hornets. Because Charlotte Hornets are awesome. I'm a fan of Alonzo Morning, But yes, officially, Zan has revealed that he is in North Carolina. I did not expect that. But I'm going to Animazement for the first time. I'm excited to go check it out and see how it goes. That is one of the big news. Other big news, I'm going to be releasing a couple more manga reviews this month to 
do go a little extra. I know things have been kind of crazy and the schedule may be a little erratic. It's because I'm still moving in, still trying to move things. I know right now that if you look at my background, it's nothing. Yes, if you look before, we had boxes. The boxes are gone. My recording studio is getting there, slowly working kind of hard. Also, I am currently missing my chalk. So the IMC, uh, my Wheel of Manga, is officially uh, not been updated because I don't have a new chalk. So if it lands on a 1, which was the dangerous in my heart, it's actually going to have to be something else. But we'll make it work. I have a great manga that's listed on there on a piece of paper in case that does come up. But besides that... We're going to be releasing some more manga reviews, some more anime reviews. I'm finally going to be going back to the Aspire Kid Motion Picture Review with the review of Reign of Fire. Yes, uh, Greta and I finally watched it. We're going to talk about it, and we're going to try to do more of the motion picture reviews, more mini movie reviews, more con reviews, and I'm going to be doing some Let's Plays because, let's be honest, next month Tears of the Kingdom is coming out, and most likely you are never going to hear from me again unless I do Let's Plays because I'm going to be playing that game like no fucking tomorrow. I'm a huge Zelda fan. So I'm going to try to get that up and running on our YouTube stream and on our Twitch stream. So, with that in mind, let's actually get to the part that you have all been waiting for. Well, actually, first, one more thing before I go. Something that I always do when I forgot to do this time. I'd like to thank all of you who are listening and watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are awesome. With every email you send, every comment you leave, every new subscriber, it just gives me more motivation to keep doing this podcast. I've been doing this for almost 15 years, and I love doing it. I'm going to be doing this until I'm an old man who has to read manga with thick glasses. You guys make my life awesome and I love doing this. Thank each and every one of you. And also, if you enjoy what you hear and you want to help us create more fun content for you to enjoy, remember to support our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Spirekin. We have tons of rewards in four tiers you can choose from. Help us create more fun content for you to enjoy and more importantly, help us be the best podcast that we can be. And with that in mind, let's get to that part you have all been waiting for. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga! Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except my substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it. And what I've done is I've assigned a manga town to each of the 10 slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin the Wheel of Manga. Whatever number it lands on, that's the manga that we're going to review in the next episode. We have everything from... Yeah Boy Koming, Go Go Loser Rangers, Shonen Note, Shayo Shonen, My Sister the Cat, and several others. Let's see, we're going to review the next episode, shall we? Number six. She likes to cook, she likes to eat. This is going to be kind of fun. So let's we're going to get to that one, and that's what we're going to view in the next episode, episode 514. Can you believe 514 episodes of this awesome podcast? So that's what we're going to view the next episode of the Spire Command Review. So anyway, as usual, thank you so much for listening and watching this awesome podcast. I'm your host, Zan. I'm Gonsville. I'll catch you guys next time, and keep reading manga. See you later. <laughs> Thank you.